Okay, we are back. I'm your host, Barry Waxler, here with the always lovely and talented Andrea Kay. I have Thank to say you. something to get you off your feet. <laughs> she loves to tweet during the show. Well, yeah, but I was also going to put our picture of our next guest up so everybody right. could see That's him right. on here. Our other host today is Urban Miaris, and our guest, our final guest of the day, is Mr. Michael Larkins from the Virgin Group. Thank okay. you so much for having me. Great. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, tell us a little bit about Evergent Group while, while you're getting your picture taken involuntarily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Evergent Group, we have a couple of brands that we operate under. But uh, essentially what we do is we provide companies the talent, energize, and support their growth. So organizations throughout the country, and especially here in San Diego, that are looking to evolve and grow, we help them find that talent. So we, whether it be on a contract basis, whether they be looking for somebody in a direct hire capacity or consulting, we provide all those solutions. So you do everything all the way up to the headhunting and everything else? Absolutely, yeah. I think it's the only way you can survive in the industry yeah. and try to differentiate yourself for sure. And in all skill sets, everything from entry level all the way up to very high level IT and technical positions as well. Interesting. And I see that you are uh, one of our employers with a pretty good number of employees yourself. You you employ about 75 people? Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. We've actually grown quite a bit here the last several years. Evergent evolved really about four years ago as an organization. Um, and in that time, we've had a lot of talent. And, you know, we subscribed and we're victims of hiring great people and leaving them alone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I get the opportunity to move out of the way and let them do good things. And then along the way, we've been able to add a lot of talent. To, uh, we, we subscribe to, the, to the, the belief that we can hire soft skills and we can train them. And so far, it's really worked for us. Knock on wood, we'll continue to see that growth. But um, yeah, we've been very, very fortunate. That's great. That's great. So uh, now, were you always in the staffing business? Yeah, guilty as charged. It's a little like the mafia. I think once you yeah. get in, it's very difficult <laughs> to get out. Um, but yeah, my entire career has been in the staffing in some way, shape, or form, in, in different capacities. Everything from recruiting all the way up to my current role as, uh, as executive and owner, um, which is great. You know, the, our industry is very unique. We work with about 80 to 100 companies here in the San Diego area, in across all skill sets and across all industries. So you really get to kind of see what's evolving, whether they're hiring for salespeople to launch a new product whether they're hiring for R&D positions to prepare a new product as well. Uh, so we kind of get a little bit of a, of a sneak peek in where, where the industry's going, uh, which makes it kind of fun. And then we see the ups and downs, too. Interesting. Interesting. And, and why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about the, the makeup of your company? Because it's not just Evergent Group. There's a few companies involved here. Yeah, I really appreciate that, Barry. Yeah, we, uh, we're made up of really essentially four companies. But uh, here in the San Diego community, really what uh, our, our brands are, are Suna Solutions, uh, where we focus really primarily on direct hire and middle market, more of the boutique companies looking to find talent. Uh, and then we also have American Consulting, and, uh, which is a service-disabled veteran-owned business. And to Urban's earlier comments at the top of the show, uh, we are one of those organizations that's also a disability-owned business. Uh, our, our chairman, Gary Herbold, was a recipient of two Purple Hearts in from Vietnam, uh, combat wounded during Tet. And so we received our certification as a disability-owned business uh, last year. Um, and thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, no, and, and you know, uh, earlier, Urban, you were commenting about this time of year being busy. Um, you know, also, this is a time of year where we see a, a great deal of activity increasing with suicide hotlines because this time of year with the holidays, uh, especially in the military, uh, we, we find that that's something that um, people are starting to feel a little bit melancholy. So our organization has kind of established a philanthropic plan last year, which helps to focus on volunteering time in the community to be able to help support that. Well, let me let me. Um ask a question on uh, when we when we talk about the disability uh, uh, disability ownership disability you, you help people that have disabilities find placement as well yeah yeah not so much right now uh, actually a lot of what we focus in on is is through contracting requirements with OFCCP right. organizations that work with the government are now required to have a larger makeup of the workforce both veteran and but disability. you understand the disability act absolutely okay. yeah a- absolutely so and, and I, I'd have to say that's a huge key for people coming in because you know sometimes there are mild disabilities and sometimes that are severe and if you understand you know a lot of that then you can help them you know in their search for for work am i correct yeah absolutely uh we take great pride in the fact that 16 percent of our current workforce is veterans with a stated goal of achieving 20. Now that's that's those are big numbers uh, we also find that there's an educational opportunity to the business community because there's some perceptions out there with regard to hiring of veterans and uh, ptsd and things of that nature as well so we uh we find it our responsibility to go out and educate um, although we are still a small company growing uh, we like to give back in a way and so our our educational opportunity is to teach local businesses uh, to that you can work through that yeah is there a, a, a there's got to be a huge risk in there if there are service related disabilities that go undisclosed in the in the hiring process that's got to be you know a liability on you as well um, I guess to a degree but I, I guess it's that risk versus reward uh, I, I think there's a greater benefit by being able to find uh, opportunities for folks um, 
part of our philanthropic plan last year, we did a, an event with Habitat for Humanity Build for the Brave. And so we were able to modify a home for a veteran to go in and, and make it ADA, lower the cabinets so that they, in a wheelchair they were able to access it and everything else. So oh, Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for... But you know, most that. employers don't realize that, especially those that have a number of employees, realize that many of their employees probably have disabilities, they're hidden disabilities. And of course, a disability is an optional question. You can't mm -hmm. mandatorily, it's against the Americans with Disability Act to uh, require a disability question. So this, uh, there are more people out there working who are not receiving benefits and all but are disabled. Yeah, Urban, you were, you were spot on with that comment. I think that we, sometimes we aren't aware of all the disabilities that may exist in the workplace. And that's a good thing because that obviously means it's not impairing their ability to do their job right. or to be a productive contributor to the success of the organization. So um, I, I think it's one of those issues that you kind of quickly get around when you're talking to people. It shouldn't be the primary focus. Well, what's exciting to me about the growth of your company, whether it's disabled or military, what have you, is that there are jobs. Oh, yeah. You know, there, there's work out there for people. What are the types of jobs that you're seeing and the types of placements that you're making these days? Well, you know, it's across the board, Andrea. Um, so a lot of what we're seeing right now is kind of maybe client-specific driven as they're launching a new program. So um, I would say about one-third of our business is made up of what we call business administration. So that would be things from entry-level customer care up to administrative assistance, uh, finance and accounting. Uh, but a lot in the IT space, there are some unique technologies that are out there. Um, and it's becoming very, very difficult to find folks with that skill set. So um, we see IT as another area that's growing quite a bit as well. But there are a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of jobs out there. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you're getting, uh, you're getting a lot of attention from the local media as well. You have uh, some awards from the Business Journal and, and some other stuff. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, when we first started off, you know, there's, uh, you, you become very focused on the bottom line. And as you see red, it can become quite the, the, quite the debilitating moment. But at some point, there was a, you know, a divining moment where we decided, let's decide what kind of a company we want to be. What is the culture we want to create? And let's not look at the bottom line, but what we want to create. And uh, uh, the, the recognition from the Business Journal in, uh, on some of the lists was a nice way to evaluate us as a barometer. How do we mm -hmm. compare to our competitors? Uh, this last year was probably where I think we evolved, where we were recognized as one of the best places to work. And I think mm -hmm. that was significant from my perspective as a business owner to know that it wasn't just about the numbers, but about what we were creating within the organization. And we have basic principles we subscribe to, empowerment, transparency, enabling client companies' goals, and community involvement. And we have gotten complete support from the board to be able to achieve all of those. And I think that speaks to who we are as a company. Um, awesome. And I think that's what's really driven a lot of our growth. That's great. You're listening to Close Up on San Diego Business here on uh, Bloomberg Radio, KFSD AM 1450. And uh, we stream live on the web at financialnewsandtalk.com. Send us a tweet at Close Up SD or Facebook backslash Close Up SD. We want to hear from you. I'm your host, Barry Waxler. Here are my co host, Andrea Kay and Urban Miaris. And our guests, Mr. M Mr. Michael Larkin from Evergent Group. So, now, if when you're. Uh, in the placement process. I want to talk yeah. just a little bit about the process itself. How much investment and time do you make with the individuals themselves in terms of their um, interviewing skills and getting them prepped for the, the process? Yeah, th th there's a lot really, and especially when we work with our veteran community. There's a lot more preparation that goes into that because the, the military, while they do a lot of great things in the training, they don't really properly prepare for the transition into the private sector. Uh, so we actually have been more involved in preparing those folks for that. But our industry, especially in the direct hire capacity, is similar to the real estate industry in the sense that there's sometimes a lot of effort and a lot of time investment with no reward. You mm -hmm. know, if you go out there and you market a home and you don't end up selling it, then you get no commission. Um, and similar in the direct hire, we work with a lot of companies and we put a lot of time trying to find the right talent, both passive and active candidates, screening them to make sure they're meeting all those requirements and not all of them get hired. So we invest a lot of time, but I think that's what makes us different though as well, is, is it's not just a pedantic process to go out to the job boards and look for a candidate. It's actually ensuring that we're partnering with the client. And one of the things I really love about the San Diego business community is you can partner with companies. Uh, unlike the Bay Area where I was recently and then previously up in LA and Orange County, you can partner. They value a partnership where you can help to collaborate on a solution. And I think that's a great value for us as an organization. Uh, we've got great people that develop good rapport. And so that allows us to be able to, to be able to go into a client and, and create those solutions. So um, I like the San Diego business community because of that. There are times where it's very provincial in feel. Uh, but fortunately for us, we've started off on the right foot and it's continued. If you go the other way and, and have a bad experience, it's it's going to get out there, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Tell our listeners how they can find out more information on you. Easiest way is to go to the website, evergingroup.com. Um, we also are on Facebook. Um, and again, any one of the operating companies, Suna Solutions, American Consulting, Zemplay, or IC Advisor, 
all have websites and then we also have uh, Facebook pages set up for all of those as well as LinkedIn. And so I'd encourage everybody to go there and uh, call us before we call you. Our Salesforce is pretty aggressive, yeah. <laughs> so we'll probably be reaching out to them pretty quick. Yeah. Well, you said you, you, it's mid-sized companies. Tell us, uh, what's your ideal company that you work with? Yeah, I would say for sooner the, the ideal company is probably somewhere between uh, 50 and 250 employees um, where you can really demonstrate value, where the, uh, the procurement of talent isn't a commodity, but it really is something that's valued. So I think that's ideally where we find ourselves. We work with a lot of large organizations where it's a little bit more of a, of a procurement process. Um, so that, that changes a little bit. We have a group in India that we utilize uh, for sourcing. So we have about 20 folks in India that also help us with some of those accounts as well. Um, but, you know, right now I think it's, it's anybody that wants to be a good partner, we're, we're here for them to help to support that. Wow. So, um, excellent. Yeah, excellent. Right. You know, one of the things that I want to point out is when you go to the website, it, it sounds easy, but we better spell it out anyway. Virgin Group is E-V-E-R-G-E-N-T-G-R-O-U-P.com. Is that no. correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Thank you for. Now, what's in the future view? Five years from now, are you guys going to be like taking this national? Well, I mean, you know, with your energy, I'm thinking, you know, good grief. Well, you know, we could we, go global with it. Yeah, well, we we actually have operations or resources. We have about two, almost two thousand resources now deployed throughout the states, um, and we're in about forty-seven states currently. But really, San Diego is really where our epicenter is at. Northern California is where our back office support operations exist in Walnut Creek. Um, so, what's next for us? Um, one of my big, hairy, audacious goals, to quote Jim Collins. Uh, our goal is to set up a nonprofit foundation. Uh, uh, we, we donate a lot of time and money through our philanthropic plan modeled after Salesforce's 111, uh, but uh, we're pretty confident that nobody can do as much with our dollars as we can. So uh, through the direction of Gary Herbold and, and myself, uh, we've set out a goal and a task to try to make sure that we set up a nonprofit so each dollar that we can contribute goes directly to the end result. Uh, well, let me, let me offer uh, our assistance to you. Whenever we see you know, philanthropic uh, ventures in our community, and this show is all about community. Um, anything we can do whenever you have something, make sure we get it on air so we can promote it for you. Very much appreciate that. Really do. And, um, you know, uh, you, you do a wonderful job, have a, um, support a lot of our San Diegans with employment and uh, find employment for those that don't work for you. So yeah. uh, that's that's awesome. Um, let's say uh, we're running out of time. So tell our listeners one more time, how do they get in touch with you? All the information, contact information, phone numbers, any way you want to do it. Yeah. It, the website's probably the quickest way to get there is the evergengroup.com and, and, and on the Facebook page as well and go there too. And, and before I forget, I want to also thank urban. You mentioned about the philanthropic endeavors, obviously some of the initiatives you've taken on and the gestures are very well, uh, are valued They make an impact. Sometimes we don't always see the impact that they make, but, um, really appreciate what you're doing out there. Thank you. And appreciate your service as well. Thank Great. you. Great. Okay. Thanks. I uh, appreciate you being with us. We are running short on time. We have a gift from our uh, sponsors for, for you. And uh, with that, I think it's time to close it out. Uh, you're listening to Close Up on San Diego Business, where we get up close and personal with homegrown San Diego business and people that are working hard to make a difference in our community. Uh, we do want your face, uh, your feedback on Twitter at Close Up SD. Uh, and just follow us on Facebook uh, backslash Close Up SD. Uh, for all of us at Close Up, until next Thursday, have a great weekend. Stay awesome, San Diego.